So not every day you get a new company entering the smartphone game. In fact, before nothing came along, we hadn't had one for a long time. And it's even longer since we had one that didn't just fade to nothing almost instantly. However, since then, nothing has gone from strength to strength. And the phone one has become one of my favorite phones. So here is my long-term review of the Nothing Phone One. Now I'll admit, when the Nothing Phone was first announced, I was a little bit skeptical, as many were. But after some hands-on time at the launch event in London, picking the phone up at launch, and using it alongside many other phones, including its main competition for the last six months, I have to say I've been pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoy this phone. It gets a lot right. By no means perfect, but it is one of the best mid-range phones out there. So what makes it so great? By the way, if you find this video uh, useful at all, uh, a thumbs up and maybe sharing the video would be hugely appreciated. Now, I honestly think that the Nothing Phone is probably the best looking mid-range phone out there. I mean, sure, at certain angles, it looks a little bit like an iPhone 12, but that's where the similarities end. The bezels are completely uniform and the screen is nice and bright. It's an absolute joy to use. There's just a little hole punch in the top left corner for that front facing 16 megapixel cam. The rear of the phone is where the part is at though and what a great looking arse it has. It's covered in LEDs that light up when the phone rings, notifications pop or when charging the phone. The LEDs also work for custom ringtones. There's even a cool little red light to indicate that the phone is recording video. And you'll see that there's a dual camera arrangement on the back. It's super refreshing to see a manufacturer not just add cameras for the sake of it. And you know what I'm talking about. We're talking those two megapixel macro cameras and the like. Nothing haven't gone that route. We've got a dual camera setup is a wide and an ultra wide. The SOC in this phone is the Snapdragon 778G+. Plus. It's a very competent mid-range chipset with decent performance, uh, even for gaming. Then in general use runs pretty cool and efficient. It doesn't have the best battery life in the world, but it doesn't have the worst either. The 4500 milliamp hour battery is more than enough to get through a full day and with the 33 watt charging, it's faster to top up than the Pixel and Galaxy competition. However, it's still nothing on the Chinese brands like Xiaomi and Oppo. So cameras, and for me, almost the weakest part of the phone, considering that the main competition is the Pixel 6a and possibly even the Pixel 6 with the price that that goes at these days. Don't get me wrong, in a lot of scenarios, they are perfectly capable and I like many of the shots that I've taken. But if you want the best camera at this price point, then you'll definitely be looking at the Pixel instead. The 50 megapixel wide lens uses a Sony IMX 766 and is perfectly capable in good light. Lots of detail, it produces images more on the cool side temperature wise. The ultra wide uses the Samsung JN1 sensor which is much smaller by comparison, but again, still produces decent images in well-lit conditions. However, as soon as the light starts to fade, it really does fall apart quick. For a mid-range phone though, it's a, it's a perfectly good setup. The night mode, I have to say, is pretty decent, and it even has a, a sort of basic pro mode. Video is pretty standard for phones at this price range. Uh, both the rear cameras allow for 4K 30 or 1080p 60, the front camera only gives 1080p 30. And speaking of the front camera, the selfies aren't bad at all. Other than my face, obviously, but you know, there's not too much I can do about that. But for your face, they're gonna be glorious. One of the worries that people had in the, the initial months after release was in regards to the software. Nothing said that updates will come roughly every two months. And they've done well with this, especially considering that they were really struggling to get software developers on board. I think Carl Pei talked about this in an interview recently, and they, they really struggled to get people on board to develop the software and develop it in the right way. Other than the first update that sort of reduced the GPU performance to help battery life, it's kind of killed my, uh, my Pokemon Go uh, experience on the phone, which is part of the reason why I can't use it as my main phone. Gutted about that, by the way. Please bring it back. The updates have generally brought a lot of stability. The main delay that people got really worked up about was for Android 13. So obviously a lot of phones already have Android 13 and nothing stated that they were gonna to have to wait until 2023, which we are now in, 
to get Android 13 on the phone. It's made quite a lot of people angry for some reason, but understandably, having a small software team, being a new business, we have to give a little bit of leeway and understand that updates might just take a little bit longer. There is currently a beta for the Nothing phone uh, with the Nothing OS 1.5 with Android 13. And that's what I'm running on my Nothing phone uh, right now. It's very stable. In fact, it's excellent. It works perfectly well. I, I don't think I've come across many people having issues with it. But obviously it's not full release yet, so we'll have to wait and see how that, how that works out. In all honesty, it's nothing drastic compared to Android 12. The experience isn't really that much different, but it's good to have it. Now, I know what you're thinking. We haven't really talked much about that flashy arse. Yes, the glyph system is a little bit gimmicky, but it does look pretty epic when people are calling. It's really handy to receive a little flash for notifications, uh, especially when, obviously when you've got the phone face down, and it really makes for a good soft light when you're recording video as well. One thing that I don't think many people think of with this is the accessibility uh, advantage of it is that I think it's pretty good for people that are hard of hearing. So when they need more visual cues, having something like this that lights up is much more useful to, to people hard of hearing. So I think that's actually a, a really good plus that a lot of people really don't talk about and it should be mentioned more. Overall, I think the Glyph LEDs are really useful. Of course, if you don't like them, you can turn them off and then you still have a very, very unique looking phone. I mean, just look at it. I mean, you see that and it's, it's different. It stands out. Without the LEDs, you don't need them, but it's nice to have. This is, this is honestly the phone that I keep going back to whilst my main phone is on charge. My main phone at the moment being the Xperia 5 Mark IV, which we're recording this video with. And I always go back to this I've got a Pixel 6 Pro, I've got a Reno 8 Pro. This is the one that I tend to go to. And it's just such a nice experience. You may have noticed throughout the video that I've been using a case on the phone. This is actually from uh, Tudia. It's uh, called the Skin Case. I'll leave a link down below in the description. It was actually quite difficult initially to get cases uh, for the Nothing Phone. So it's nice that companies like Turia and a couple of others have actually taken the chance and, and made them. Turia did a great job with this case, so I highly recommend it. However, there are downsides. The speakers, whilst loud, don't really offer much in the way of the low end. When you really turn it up, the high end can become really piercing. Uh, you certainly notice it whilst blasting a bit of the wombats out whilst you're in the shower. It's almost too painful to listen to. And no, I'm not talking about my singing. The haptics seem to be a little bit better on the Android 13 update. I think that the Pixel 6a's haptics felt nicer from what I remember, but this, they're fine. They're fine. They work and uh, they, they seem more consistent now. The only other thing worth mentioning that I think is significant is there's, there's no dust or water resistance with this phone. Which, you know, I get a little bit anxious these days about no water or dust resistance. I never used to. And it... It's kind of weird how you now think, oh, ooh, wow, uh, yeah, I really need that. What about the rain? And you're like, well, you used to use a phone in the rain all the time when you had no resistance whatsoever. So, you know, that might not be a big deal to people, but for me these days, I feel like it's something that I kind of want, not necessarily need, but I want on, on my, main, my main phone. But you do get wireless charging and reverse wireless charging, so, it's gonna come down to what features you want from your phone as to what you choose, as is always the case. Overall, I think the Nothing Phone is the natural competition right now for the Pixel 6a and the Samsung Galaxy A53. It will be solid throughout 2023 and beyond, to be honest, with the software updates. I think software support is three years for OS updates, four years for uh, security patches. You're not gonna have a problem. It's a great phone by a new company and it deserves to be in your pocket. I'm super excited to see what comes next. That's it for this one. Stay grounded. See you soon.